Good morning. This is Pastor Jamie of the First Presbyterian Church of Livonia, welcoming you to our service of worship. We are the happy little church on top of the hill, located at 3837 Center Street, Livonia, New York, and also to be found on Facebook Live and on FM 91.9 within a half a mile of our parking lot. Come, worship with us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth on that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is in the Lord of the God of Jacob and whose hope is in the Lord their God.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, as we open your word, we know that we depend upon the presence of your spirit in our hearts in order to understand properly what it is that you are whispering into our ear or perhaps even shouting through our life so that we might leave this place more fully, more powerfully, more wisely, your hands upon the earth. Now I'm going to read to you from Luke chapter 16, verses 1 to 13 from the New Life Version. Jesus said to his followers, there was a rich man who put a boss over his uh, houses and lands. Someone told him that his boss was, was not using his riches the right way. The rich man sent for the boss and said, What is this that I hear about you? Tell me what you have done with my things. You're not the boss of my lands and my houses anymore. The boss said to himself, what will I do now? The owner of the house and the lands is taking my work away from me. I cannot dig in the ground for a living. I am too proud to ask for help. I know, I know what I will do. I will make it so that when I lose this work, I'll be able to go into the homes of my friends. He sent for the people who owed the rich man. He asked the first one, how much do you owe the owner? The first man said, 100 barrels of oil. The boss said to him, take your bill, sit down at once and change it to 50. He asked another one, how much do you owe? He said, 100 bags of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and change it to 80. Then the rich man said that this sinful boss had been wise to plan for himself. For the days ahead. For the people of the world are wiser in their own ways than the children of light. I tell you, make friends for yourselves by using the riches of the world that are so often used in wrong ways. So when riches are a thing of the past, friends may receive you into a home that will be forever. He that is faithful with little things is faithful with big things also. He that is not honest with little things is not honest with big things. If you have not been faithful with the riches of this world, who will trust you with true riches? If you have not been faithful with uh, that which belongs to another person, who will give you things to have? as your own. No servant can have two bosses. He will hate the one and love the other, or will be faithful to the one and not be faithful to the other. You cannot be faithful to God and to mammon at the same time. Now, I bet that's a surprise, isn't it, that Jesus said that the, uh, the rich man, rather than being furious at what his dishonest uh, servant had done, said, look, this guy is smart. This guy is wise to make provision for himself, to do things so that he'll be welcomed into the homes of other people when he no longer has a job with me. Do you ever wonder what the boundary is between being clever and being Christian? I don't know about you, but I admire clever people. Though I have to admit that many of the clever people that I see in the news today are not clever the right way. To be clever the right way, we have to understand the nature of mammon, of, of worldly wealth. Worldly wealth is attractive, but it does not endure. Everything that we know will cease to exist in the future. That's every thing. Not everything is a thing. There are in our lives those 
areas that are of eternal value that will persist always. When God creates the creation and we are free from bondage to decay and death, the values of love, joy, patience, peace, the values of the spirit will endure. And those who've invested their lives in true wealth will rejoice. Now, like Christians, the Greeks in Jesus' day believed that this world of things would end and that the end was probably pretty near. That they already knew. They didn't have to be taught that. Oh, not all of them. There were plenty of people who are like people today who think that the world of, of wealth is, and as the world we know will last forever. It won't. Ultimately, they already understood that people's lives would be judged by what they invested in, because those who invested in mammon in worldly wealth would be sorely disappointed when their wealth dissolved, just disappeared. They already believed that we had a true home somewhere and it wasn't in this world. What they didn't know is Jesus Christ. So the boss in this parable, well, it says he's a wealthy man and he, and he put a steward, a boss, over his houses and his land. And this boss managed a fortune. Actually, the truth is that this boss mismanaged a fortune because he thought it was his to manage. He had taken on the attitude, hey, the rich guy's got plenty. He doesn't uh, pay attention to what I'm doing anyhow. So it's really my job. It's really my wealth to do with what I want to do. And now he was about ready to lose his nice, cushy, white-collar job. As a former high six-figure guy canned for cheating his employer, no one would give him another similar position. In fact, the man who had put him there would most likely make him a field hand. So rather than living in comfort, every time it rained, there'd be mud between his toes, and pain in his back. In this story, our brilliant opportunist boiled all the complications of his situations down to something very simple. He enjoyed having money, but he would never have access to this kind of wealth again. He had no false illusions. He was a realist. He knew what was about ready to happen. And creative person that he was, he does a little creative accounting with his boss's creditors. What he did was to make their lives easier. Not his life, but their life. You see, he was in many ways very close to the kingdom of God. And he understood, even though he was a crook, that his security depended upon the welfare of other people and their generosity towards him. Now here's the punchline. The rich man said that this sinful boss had been wise to plan for himself in the days ahead. For the people of the world are wiser in their day than the children of light. Surprised? Well, don't be. What Jesus is saying that we who have true riches, we who understand what has eternal value, should be as persistent and as clever and as well-trained as a politician or a casino owner or a used car salesman when it comes to using the wealth of God, the wealth that God has entrusted us with. From day one, God's people have had a tendency to think that since God is all-powerful and God is all-wise, I say, yea, God, and he takes care of everything. Oh, we are stewards. We, you and I, we are stewards of the wealth of God, and we are to be as least as clever 
as a crook. The only surprise here is a realization that perhaps we have not worked as hard at building people up and building the kingdom up as we have been at getting ahead at work and putting some money in the bank. Here is what Jesus wants us to grasp. I tell you, make friends for yourself by using the riches of the world, using mammon, that is so often misused. So when riches are a thing of the past, friends may receive you into a home that will last forever. Yes, it's nice to have a warm house. Yes, it's nice to have a car that starts when you turn the key. But as God's steward, stewards, it is our job to manage God's wealth during our life. We talk about our house, our car, our career, our bank account, but it really isn't true. Just as with the steward in this story, everything we have belongs to God. Are we using it for God? That's the question. All wealth exists belongs to God. And when the world as we know it ceases to exist, those things that will ensure our welcome into God's household forever are the thing, things of God's heart. We have opportunities, you and I, every day to affirm and encourage and uphold others. Whether we realize it or not, uh, or not, we go about making friends using God's wealth entrusted to us by caring for them by listening to them, by treating them well, by helping them achieve their purposes and taking time to celebrate the relationship. And I bet you that every one of you here has encouraged someone this last week. You see, this, this little family gathering of gods in Livonia, we are people people. We do care about people. And we do what we can to build them up. Jesus is calling for us to remember that this is why we're here. Not just in church, but in our life. We are the stewards of God's wealth. Mammon betrays us if we put it before God. As it says in the opening psalm, Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in those in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth, and on that very day, their plans perish. God is always reliable. Now this coming week, who can you spend time with celebrating the things that God celebrates in eternity? Not mammon, but love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If you'll think about this, this sermon, maybe you will see one or two more opportunities to do what you do already and, are, and you know and you love it because it's when you're at your best to love others with God's love. So be clever in loving. Be creative in celebrating and find ways to build strong, happy, godly relationships. Be at least as resourceful in loving others as you have been in getting stuff. We build wealth that lasts into eternity, so we make friends in heaven who will welcome us when it is our turn to depart this earth. Yes, you and I, we're God's stewards, and our greatest joy is found in the things of God the wealth that is eternal. Now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today and each day of your life until our Lord comes to take you home.